Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning, where we look stupid so you don't have to. We replumbed our Mac valve. It used to be located on this side with the boost reference lines running across the top of the turbo heat shield, wedged in between this uh, inlet pipe, and now we've run it over to this side of the engine and over the top of the turbo inlet pipe, and then so just a lot shorter reference lines. We've got a new file from Kyle that'll add some boost at the bottom end of the RPM range, so we're gonna go test that and see how she did. Today we uh, we finally got our external wastegate uh, installed. So now we are no longer boost creeping. So we, we're going back to 91 octane because uh, we need to get the car stable on pump gas for uh, road rallies because we're going to do Crown Rally West and Crown Rally North this summer. And we can't guarantee that we'll have E85 access. So with the, the knock due to the octane limitations, the car just was not happy with the boost creep that we were experiencing before, but now we've got uh, 1.5 bar bring pressure on our internal gate, or external gate, and the car isn't boost creeping anymore. Shout out to Ratified Motorsport for installing that for us. But now we've got a fresh file from Kyle, so we'll be able to target a safe boost pressure for 91 octane, optimize the boost there, then we'll tune for E85 so that we have both fueling worst cases and fueling best case. So right now, we're on revision seven. We are going to do a third gear pull with 91 octane and some additional boost it looks like, and send that log over to Kyle and dial her in a little bit. So pretty momentous day for us. It seems like all of our hardware issues are behind us. We can start tuning this bad boy. Steady pull. 
Saba 25 PSI on the virtual dash. It's hitting where he wants, but it's just it's hunting a little bit, so I'm sure the the close loop just needs some better uh, initial values to hit the boost targets that we're targeting. So now we we have 91 dialed in, and we've been playing around with E85 a little bit, and it has been just a wild difference on the amount of power you can get out of that fuel. So right now I'm going to cow flash with my phone onto the DS1, the next file from Kyle, and then we're gonna go do a little log ski. So I open up the uh, file on, on here, logging into the DS1 using a browser. I choose the file, I downloaded it from my email, go into files, click on that new file, send to the, send to the DS1, file uploaded, I go to the ECU tab, and then I do a cow flash, select that newest file, and yes. And now I like to turn my lights off and turn that off just to keep the battery in a good state. And I'll only race and flash in about 30 seconds. And then we'll go do our, our, uh, our log pull. The cool thing is, is that uh, Kyle's been sending me two different maps to, to log with so that we can kind of get two different boost levels. Um, tested in one map or in one uh, revision so I'll, I'll log a pull on map zero and then I'll switch and log a pull on map one and then that just gives him twice the amount of data in you know six minutes of me doing two different pulls it's almost done flash complete turn ignition off one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand six one thousand seven one thousand eight one thousand nine one thousand ten one thousand, 10, 1, 000. Turn ignition back on, clear fault codes, completed clear, and we can start the car. All right, we are uh, approaching our dyno. And uh, a couple things you wanna do in preparation for uh, a dyno pull. Make sure the car is in sport. So bumping it down between D and S, go to S. We uh, hold down traction control so it goes ESC completely off. And then we bop it over into manual. And you wanna go full throttle, but not all the way down to the uh, kick down. We have a TCU tune, so this car won't up downshift. So like it doesn't really matter, I don't think. But according to the DS1 instructions, you're not supposed to hit the kick down. Just that little button that you feel at the bottom of the travel of the gas pedal. I've got my laptop connected to the DS1 via Wi-Fi. I downloaded their little uh, logger file off of the DS1. It opens a command window. You start it. You do a full gear pull, lift at the top, shift into fourth. Exit that command window, <clears throat> and there will be a, a CSF file placed into the... Uh, DS2 is their logger placed into the DS2 folder. So the roads are a little wet right now. So I don't know if that's gonna screw anything up. But I go into third gear, slow down to about 2,500 RPM, turn the logging on. surface nowhere for anyone to enter the road in front of you and well I mean we're on a dyno right so we'll switch it over to map one which is just holding the cruise control stock forward for three seconds or so your check engine light will flash you bump up like you're increasing the speed on your cruise control stock into map zero to one or down to map zero blah 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 and uh, we can turn around and do the same thing for map one. Pressure now that we are on um, 
E85. I've spoken to a couple others on the DS1 with a similar hybrid turbo setup. Stock fuel lines from the low pressure to the engine are fairly small. We can upgrade those to 3 8 pretty easily on our own. Get some quick disconnects. So that might be an option if the injector pulse width is, or if the duty cycle on the injector getting maxed out. Basically, the higher the fuel pressure you're running to those injectors, the less pulse width you need. Um, but if it drops more than what the duty cycle can support, we may need to upgrade that fuel line. But right now, the last pull I did, not this one, but previous revision, we are still at like 63% duty cycle, but we are low boost right now. Although I didn't look at what that was, but that felt that felt faster. So, as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Let me just reiterate on the uh, the fuel pressure. The higher the pressure that you can get to the injectors, the more fuel they are going to squirt per pulse. So, if fuel pressure getting to the injectors is dropping you need to increase that pulse width or the time they're open to get the same amount of fuel into the engine. Yeah, so current injector. Oh, and so the, the higher the RPM, the less window you have to inject that fuel. So 10 milliseconds at 3000 RPM is a low percentage of duty cycle, but 10 milliseconds at 7000 RPM is a is around 60 something percent so the higher you're revving the less window of time you have to inject and so it's crucial to have bigger big enough injectors and also enough pressure getting to the injectors but right now i don't know at like 27 pounds of boost on e60 we we're at 60 percent. so i am going to guess that we will need some upgraded fuel if we're going to run it at like 36 pounds just a hunch if we're already at 63% at 27 pounds on E60, if we go up to E85, that's more fuel requirement. And uh, if we up the boost, that's more fuel requirement. So we're kind of getting hit twice there.